Hello everyone, this is Dr. E, and for today, pag-uusapan naman natin kung paano tayo mag-solve ng mga parallelograms base sa mga properties at conditions ng special quadrilaterals na ito. Sa pagsagot ng ilan sa mga problems sa geometry, sometimes, kailangan natin gumawa ng equations natin para ma-solve natin yung mga missing parts ng ating mga quadrilaterals. So, pwede natin mahanap yung angles, yung diagonals, at yung mga sides ng ating uh, quadrilaterals sa pamamagitan ng uh, mga properties ng conditions na na-discuss na natin before. At yan ang pag-uusapan natin dito sa ating uh, lesson for today at magsasagot tayo ng ilan sa mga problems involving our parallelograms at kukunin natin yung mga sukat ng mga yan gamit syempre yung properties at yung sukat at yung algebra na isa sa mahalagang ingredient sa pagsagot ng mga geometry problems. So, in this particular problem, it says here that we need to solve a system of linear equations to find the values of x and y in parallelogram KLMN. So, yung ating parallelogram, meron tayong dalawang variables, meron tayong x and y, and usually, kapag meron tayong two or more variables na kailangan hanapin, gumagamit tayo ng systems of linear equation. At ito yung gagawin natin, at ang challenge dito ay one, Paano tayo magpo-produce ng ating systems of linear equation? Base lang sa nakikita nating parallelogram. And two, anong method or technique sa pag-solve ng linear system ang appropriate para sa problem na ito? So, simulan na natin dahil ang hahanapin daw natin ay yung sukat ni line segment KM at line segment LN. At mapapansin ninyo na yung mga line segments na yan ay yung ating mga diagonals ng parallelogram. At alam din natin from our conditions at properties na ang uh, diagonals ng ating mga parallelograms ay bisector din na matatawag at napakahalaga ng term na bisector at yung uh, isa sa mga conditions na yan ng parallelogram para masagot natin ang sukat ni KM at ang sukat ni LM. So, ano ang gagawin natin? Since alam natin na perpendicular bisector yung ating mga diagonals, ang ibig sabihin nun na napakahalaga ay nagiging congruent or magkaparehas ang sukat ng dalawang line segments na naputol mula doon sa ating by sector. So, ibig sabihin yan, itong line segment na yan, yung dalawang line segments na nakikita nyo, equal yan. So, ibig sabihin, pwede tayong mag-formulate ng ating line segment KM gamit ang equation na yan. At since yung line segments na yan ay may, per, may by sector, so, ibig sabihin, si y plus 10 ay equal sa sukat ni 2x minus 8. At ito yung ating first equation na gagamitin para masolve natin yung sukat ni Km. At since si Lm ay congruent din, ibig sabihin nun ay pwede natin i-equate yung ating diagonal Ln with each other dahil parehas ang sukat ng halfway from L to the center which is Represented by point P, so si LP ay congruent kay PN. So, ibig sabihin yan, si line segment LN ay equal kay X equal to Y plus 2. Ayan. So, yan yung ating equation number 2. So, ngayon, meron na tayong linear system na pwede natin gamitin para masugutan natin yung ating diagonal KM at diagonal LN. So, since yung equation natin ay gumagamit ng linear system, pwede natin gamitin si Kramer's rule, pwede natin gamitin si elimination method, pwede natin gamitin si substitution method, and in this particular case, since nakikita nyo na si equation 2, isolated na agad si x, ang magandang gawin natin dyan ay gamitin si substitution method para makuha natin yung values ng ating mga variables. So, umpisahan na natin yung pagkuha ng first variable. So, gamit natin yung equation y plus 10 equals 2x minus 8. Papaltan natin si x at gagawin natin siyang y plus 2. So, ang new equation natin ay magiging y plus 10 equals 2 
times something minus 8. At yung something na yan, yan si y plus 2, dahil si x nga daw ay si y plus 2. So, meron tayo ngayong y plus 2 na pwede nating ma-solve. At ngayon, iisa na lang yung variable natin sa equation na to. So, ibig sabihin nun, makukuha na natin si variable y by simplifying our equation. So you have y plus 10 equals 2y plus 4 minus 8. And then by further simplifying it, we'll have 2y minus 4, kasi 4 minus 8 is negative 4. And by solving for y, we can subtract y. And we can add 4 on this side. So meron tayo ngayong 2y minus y is y, equal to 10 plus 4, which is 14. So, ibig sabihin yan, ang value ng y natin ay equal to 14, at ang hahanapin na lang natin ay yung value natin ng x. So, sa pagkuha ng y, ang ginawa natin, dinamit natin sa equation number 1, and then we replace the value of x by y plus 2, at by simplifying our equation, makukuha natin yung value ng y, at ang y nga, ay equal to 14. At since kailangan natin kunin si value ng x, mapapansin ninyo na si equation number 2 explicitly given na si x ay equal to y plus 2. So ang gagawin na lang natin ngayon ay kunin ang equation na yan, x equal to y plus 2, at change natin si y into 14. So that means ang x variable natin ay equal to 16. So meron na tayong x equals 16 at y equals 14 na magagamit natin para makuha natin yung sukat ni ln at ni km na at this point ay expression pa din. So, linisin natin yung ating board pagkatapos natin kunin ang value ng x which is equal to 16 para makuha na natin yung actual measurement ni ln at ni km. M. So what are we going to do here? So using our equation, alam natin ang sukat ni LM ay x and y plus 2 at ang sukat ni KM ay si y plus 10 at 2x minus y. So what we're going to do here ay kukunin naman natin yung mga equation na yan and instead of equating it to each other, ang sukat ngayon ni KM would equal to the sum of y plus 10 Add it to 2x minus 8. So, yan ngayon yung sukat ni line segment KM at si line segment LN. Ang sukat niyan would be the sum of x and y plus 2. At since alam natin na si x is equal to four, um, 16 at si y ay equal to 14, all we need to do is to replace our x variable and y variable by that number. So si km would equal to y is 14, 14 plus 10 plus 2 times x is 16 minus 8. And by simplifying this, we will collect similar terms. So 14 and 10, 2 times 16 minus 8, that will be the value of km. So we have here the sukat. Wow, well, we have here the sukat. We have here the sukat of km, or shall we say, yes, km, which is y plus 10 is equal to 2x minus 8. We replace x by 14, and we replace... Um, we replace x by 16 and y by 14, and by doing basic algebra work, left to right technique, so we'll have 48 as the size of our four um, line segment km. At si line segment ln naman, ayan naman yung ating sukat ni ln, at alam natin na si ln ay x plus y plus 2. We will replace x by 16 and y by 14, and using basic algebra, left to right technique, for order of operation, and we'll have ln equal to 32. And with this, alam na natin ngayon ang sukat natin doon sa ating mga diagonals, which is 48 and 32. So ganyan natin kinukuha yung mga sukat ng ating mga par parallelograms gamit syempre yung properties natin na napag-aralan before. So let's move on and answer our second parallelogram. And in this particular case, Mga angle measures naman ang hahanapin natin. So in this parallelogram ABCD, 
given daw ang ating angle A at angle B, pero kahit given si A at si B, hindi rin natin siya mapapakinabangan ng masyado dahil variable or expression yung binigay sa atin. At ang kailangan natin makuha yung actual sukat ng mga corners na yan. So paano natin gagawin yan at mahanap ang measurement ni angle A, angle B, angle C, and angle D? Gagamitin siyempre natin yung ating anim na conditions at sabi nga, kung ang isa sa mga conditions niyan ay masatisfy natin, ibig sabihin, parallelogram yung ating quadrilateral at pwede na natin magamit yung ating mga conditions para makuha natin yung x variable na yan. At least, isa lang yung variable natin. So, ibig sabihin, hindi natin kailangan na systems of linear equation. Kailangan lang natin si property number 6, which means, on a graph, or one angle is supplementary to both its consecutive angles. At ang keyword natin dito para masolve natin yung x variable na yan, supplementary and consecutive. So, ibig sabihin, since supplementary si angle A and B, ang sum ng mga angles na yan ay equal to 180 degrees. At ang gagawin na lang natin ngayon ay kunin si value ng x using that property. So, pwede na nating kunin si measurement of angle A plus yung measurement ng angle B according to our supplementary angle ay equal to 180 degrees. At ano ba ang sukat ni A? Ang sukat ni A ay si X at ang sukat ni B ay si 2X equal to 180 degrees. So, gamitin na natin si algebra and we can add these two together. 3X is equal to 180 degrees and we're going to divide both sides by 3 so that x is going to equal to 60 degrees at yan yung x variable natin na kakailanganin natin to be able to find the rest of the angles that we are looking for. So the measurement of angle B and the measurement of angle B, when you add them up, is equal to 180. We replace A by x and B with 2x. And using algebra, we found out that x is equal to 60 degrees, which we are going to be using so we can find the value of the measurement of angle A. So measurement of angle A, 60 degrees cx, since A is x. So measurement of angle A is equal to 60 degrees. At the measurement of angle B is twice of x and twice of one, I mean twice of 60 degrees is 120 degrees. So measurement of angle B is 120 degrees. And since we know na yung mga opposite angles ng ating parallelogram ay congruent, so ibig sabihin yan, si angle C at si angle A ay magkaparehas lang ng sukat, kaya si angle C ay equal siya kay 60 degrees. At syempre, Opposite din si B at si D, kaya kung 120 si measurement of angle B, 120 din ang sukat ng measurement ni angle D. At yan yung measurement ng ating mga angles gamit ang property or ang conditions ng ating parallelogram. So let's move on and answer the last parallelogram of the day. And here, this is a parallelogram at ang value ng x ang hahanapin natin dito para makuha natin yung measurement ng angle A at ni angle C. Paano natin uumpisahan yung ating equation? Kailangan sumangguni tayo sa conditions natin. At ang conditions natin, meron tayong anim dyan at kung isa dyan ay masatisfy at isa dyan ay pwede natin gamitin to be able to come up with an equation that will solve for x, then pwede na natin umpisahan ang paghahanap sa hiwaga ng x variable ng parallelogram na yan. At syempre, ang gagamitin natin dito ay yung condition number 4, both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. At sino ba ang opposite dyan na pwede natin gamitin? Syempre, si opposite D and B dahil siya yung given. So what we can do is to equate those two expressions. Kaya meron tayo ngayong measurement of angle D which is 87 at si measurement of angle B which is an expression x plus 29. And in this case, algebra na ang gagamitin natin. We subtract 29 on both sides so that x will be by itself. At ngayon, alam na natin ang variable x natin which is 58 degrees at yan ang tutulong sa atin para makuha natin yung measurement ng mga angles natin. So, syempre sabi kung gruben si angle D at si angle B. So, ibig sabihin si angle B kahit hindi na natin siya isolve, alam na natin na si angle B ay 
87 degrees dahil magka-opposite angle sila at nakikita nyo yung little mark na yan, ibig sabihin nun, pareha sila na sukat. So, ibig sabihin, si measurement of angle B, kahit i-substitute mo yung value ng 58 dyan, mapapansin nyo na parehas rin lang ang sukat niya with angle D which is 87 degrees. Ang problema na lang natin is si angle A at si angle C. And what property are we going to use so that we'll be able to find the value of C and A? Gagamitin natin si condition number 6 which means yung consecutive angles ng isang parallelogram ay supplementary at dito ang supplementary angle natin na pwedeng gamitin is si angle D at si angle C para makuha natin yung measurement ni C. So what are we going to do? We're going to be using algebra. Measurement of angle D plus measurement of angle C is 180 degrees. Papalta natin, syempre, si measurement of angle D dahil alam natin na siya ay 87. And now, pwede na tayong gumamit ng algebra to find the value of C or angle C. So we subtract 87 on both sides and the measurement of angle C is 93 degrees. So isa na lang ang angle na hahanapin natin which is angle A na kailangan lang natin gamitan ng properties at hindi na ng algebra para makuha natin ang last measurement ng angle ng parallelogram na yan. At since dahil alam natin na opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent, so kung si C ay 93 degrees, si A ay syempre ay 93 degrees Then And with that, nakuha na natin ang ating mga measurements gamit ang ating mga conditions and properties ng parallelogram. And uh, using those conditions, we're able to come up with an equation that will help us solve for the variable that is given or clue na binigay sa atin sa problem na yan para makuha natin yung mga angles or lengths na hinahanap natin sa isang parallelogram. And with that, ready na kayo sa inyong number bender challenge of the day because meron kayong parallelogram na A, B, C, D na may center na O. Hanapin nyo daw ang measurement ng line segment AO at line segment OC gamit ang information at conditions na alam natin about parallelogram. So sa mga kakasa sa ating number bender challenge of the day, comment it down below at tingnan natin kung ano ang sukat ng line segment AO at line segment OC sa number bender challenge natin ngayon. And with that, sa pagsagot ng ating mga parallelograms, dapat nating uh, sanayin ang utak natin to think critically and analytically because most of the times sa geometry, hindi tayo binibigyan ng explicit equation na isa solve. Sometimes, we need to come up with our own equation based on the properties and conditions na alam natin about a certain polygons para makuha natin yung mga hinahanap nating sukat or measurements ng mga parts ng ating polygon. In this case, parallelogram. This is Dr. E and see you again next time.